What I really love about the past is thinking about the human experience in the past. I think one of the most powerful things about archaeology is that it gives us insight into ways of life that work well for people, but that don't happen to exist at present. It is fundamentally about who we are as human beings. I'm Catherine Twiss. I'm an archaeologist and an associate professor at Stony Brook University on Long Island. I specialize in Southwest Asia, so right now I work in Chattelhuyuk, Turkey, on the Asian side. So we have... I work in prehistory, specifically from, let's say, about 5,000 years ago to more like 10,000 years ago, normally. Key features of the Neolithic of Southwest Asia. Compared to earlier periods, you get a population boom. You get people who are relying on plants and animals that they produce themselves. They're still often hunting and gathering quite a lot, but they're relying on domesticates. They're building houses that are sometimes quite elaborate. And at Chattelhuyuk, they're two stories and they've got plastered walls and you get wall paintings. You get elaborate art and other forms of symbolism. I specialize in animal bones, which means that at Chattelhuyuk, what I do is I actually am not one of the people who digs on a regular basis. I'm down in the lab looking at the animal remains that come out of the ground. And what I do is I figure out what kind of animals are present, what body parts of those different animals are present, what people might have done to them. These are modern bones. They're not the bones from Chattelhuyuk. Chattelhuyuk animal bones stay in Turkey. So we have modern comparative specimens in Turkey that we use, so we do the exact same thing there. We have a lab set up with sheep bones, goat bones, cattle bones, donkey bones, etc., that we use to study the materials in the field. So the first thing you want to do for bone analysis is figure out which bone or tooth it is. And the great thing for this is that mammals generally have the same bones in their bodies. We all have humeri, which are the bones of the upper arm. We have a radius and an ulna, which are the bones in your lower arm. So to some extent, you're a walking cheat sheet, right? So I have this lovely bone fragment here. And that's what it looks like. And what I can do is get an animal and just look and see, do the bones match? And here, the answer is clearly no. And I can just go down and look for a match. Now, as it turns out, here we have a basic match, different sides of the body, but still. Once you've figured out what bone it is, the next thing you want to figure out is what animal it comes from. And there, again, it's a matter of comparing. So we have a big dog. We have a goat. We have a couple of different sizes of deer. And we have a gazelle. So you can see really clearly, dog, this is not, right? It's a different shape. This is a reasonably good match, but it's not perfect. But this one, that's a pretty good match. And so I know that this is a goat. And so what that tells me is that this is a goat, or because the bones are very similar, a sheep. So what I know now is I have the radius of a sheep or a goat. Then I can look at what shape is the bone in? What condition is it in? I can see if there are marks of cooking on them. Do they have cut marks? That one, not so much, but look at that. That is a really terrific cut mark from a modern person. And then burning in ways that might indicate it was cooked. So I can get a lot of information off of any one bone, and then I can combine that information to end up with a good idea 
of what people were doing with animals at the site. Greta, can you grab it for me, please? It's incredibly exciting to go to a site and to realize that you are the first person to see that, to touch that in thousands of years. To think that the last person who held this was a person whose way of life no longer exists, who was fundamentally like you, but five, 10, 15, 50,000 years ago, that's just an incredible feeling.